everyone, this is a quick video about um, marine magnetometer data processing. And here in natural observation, I receive this kind of data all the time. And I would like to make just this video to show how I review the data when I just receive it. And I'm always trying to use the simplest tools that I have here. More complex tools might be like using Joseph or other softwares that you use to protest, process magneto magnetometer data. So this is the simplest form of uh, marine magnetic data where you have the line numbers. You can see there are different lines. I'm going to scroll through quickly. Different line numbers. And you have the time at which each uh, magnetic measurement was done. You have the eastern, you have the northern. It would be the latitude and the longitude. You have the magnetic field, which I've called here F. So I say this is the simplest form of magnetic data because um, you can also have like the depth where the fish was flying. You could have the altitude. You could have the altitude. You could even have the eastern, or you can say you can have X2. X2, which is the depth of a second magnetometer, which is, you have Y2, which is... Um, no, I mean X2, which could be the eastern of the second magnetometer. That depends on your arrangements. So if I show you something here, you see that the magnetometer can be a single magnetometer. In that case, you have only a single magnetic field. It could be a transverse um, gradiometer, which you will see two magnetic fields. And then they will have a gradient, which is magnetometer 1 minus magnetometer 2 divided by the distance between them. The same thing you have a longitudinal gradiometer and you have even a complex three axis gradient magnetometer. All these examples are magnetometers from C spy. So when I was talking about you could have the depth of the magnetic field means that you could have an, a pressure sensor inside this magnetometer and also a single beam echo sounder which is measuring the altitude of the magnetometer above the seabed. So at all the time you should have a depth you should have a depth, you should have an altitude. So the depth plus the altitude would give you an idea of the water depths in that area. So going back to uh, this um, magnetic data. So I will just show, demonstrate in this video how I quickly look at the data before I even start processing it in a complex or in a geophysical sense. So what we are doing in this video is just an introduction of seeing how you can use your knowledge of geographic information systems particularly I'm using QGIS, to observe the particular places where you have <coughs> magnetic anomalies. So I have imported these lines uh, in uh, QGIS. I went to the layers, then I went to add a layer, then I go to add delimited text file layer. So in this, I will browse to my file, to my folder, let's say one of these, it's one of these files, then I will import it. I will say open it. So when I open that file, I will need to come and determine what the geometry of that file is. This is something that I would not like to waste my time on. Then you have to give uh, the geographic position of that file. You should have some basic knowledge of QGIS. You should choose your magnetic field to be that. And then you will import this data. And once you click add, I have already done that. Then you will have something like this. So now we have our magnetic data right there in QGIS. So another thing that I would like to check is that, hey, where was this data collected? So I'll add some background image uh, to see where that data was collected. So let's... So there we have our magnetic lines right there in QGIS. And something I would like to quickly do is that I will first of all create, like to recreate these lines. Or I will do, I will go here and I will say, um, I will try to save um, a shape file out of this. I will go to shape file and I will go to save. I will go to RIM. I will just create a new folder there. <coughs> Call it shape. Then I will write the name of that. For example, then I will save it. Once I save it, I can comfortably remove the text point of the shape file that is right in here. So now the next thing I would like to do is to use um, an algorithm to create um, points, call it points to path, points to path, that's it. So the vector creation, I go to points to path, 
right here in the processing toolbox if you don't have the processing toolbox you have to come here and open it over here so if i click that open the points to part uh, algorithm i will load in my file and then i will create my lines and the ordering of my lines is going to be um, the line name i'll put line name there and the sorting is going to be by line and i have to save it right over here but i'm not going to save it yet i will just run the algorithm and see what it gives to me yeah i have something here called path if i pick that you see that now i have lines oh that it works so if it works then i'm going to save this save it as lines okay so now i have the lines and i have the points so the next thing i would like to do is that i would like to interpolate i would like to interpolate these points um, to a certain distance in order to understand the magnetic so you see that we have magnetic points all along that line and uh yeah i will go to i'm going to pause the video a little bit in order to adjust things here on my side where do i pause the video so welcome back again to this second part of this video and since i have points and lines now i would like to split this because it's just one file and all the lines are in this one shape file i would like to split them so i have individual lines so to do that i will go to vector ah uh, i will look for that it's i usually forget where it's found wow it's here so i'll say split vector file i'm going to split that i'm going to split that width by line so and i want to have shape files and i would like to save it uh, in somewhere in a directory i'll come look for the best place where i can put that uh, data magnetometer where can i put it um shape i have shape files here i'll call this in our lines i'll choose that folder and i will run the algorithm bingo so now <clears throat> i have individual files that I, I, I kept there so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go back to that folder and import import these lines to go back to that folder i just want to get a shortcut to get there this is the folder with the different lines and you, you remember shape files always come five of them for whatever reason um, that's not an important thing for now so I have shape files of line of the different lines right up to here. These are the lines. And how many of them are there? There are about 49 of them. You can see here, right below here, 49 lines. So I will shift this a little bit here. I'll click there. Put back my lines. I will drag and drop. Drag and drop. Bingo. So now I have all those lines inside my QG's project. So what I'm going to do is that this is the original lines. I'm going to remove it with lines. Now this layer, uh, this layer manager is very crowded now. So I'll do something intelligent. That's what I usually do. I'll come here and I'll open subfolder. That subfolder I'll call it lines. As I call it lines, I'll pick up all these lines and go to that subfolder bring them inside the subfolder boom so now i can open close open open close so those lines have different names they are different colors i mean and different names so um <coughs> oops i mistakenly removed oh it's here it's right there so these are our lines uh, the data is in here so that is something I have done. I've managed to do this in a line by line fashion. So I will pause the video a little bit on my side and make things in order. Then I come back for the next section. And so guys, back to this section of this video. And we go back to all those points that we made. And the thing I would like to do is come to raster. I will come to raster analysis. I'll be using particularly inverse distance to power because this is this method, this method particularly pinpoints uh, anomalies inside any type of data, maybe temperature or whatever you're doing. But in this case, we are looking at magnetometer data. So I'll click here. 
and the point layer will be this one you have a weighting power you have a smoothing amount of smoothing to put in let me just say that i'm going to put five say for example this is just a test now i'm going to just put here um five second radius five i just want to interpolate at the steps of five i must make sure that i'm interpolating my magnetic field then all the rest i'll leave it uh default for a moment yeah i got it bing now i will come back here and remove my points then i see that i have a grid but the grid is according to the line so i can see lines and their holes of course but this is just um, how i'm reviewing the data so i'll block that the grid is grayscale and i would like to uh, make a little bit things on that grid where is it is found here so i'm going to bring it out out of the group yeah now i have my grid here these points i don't need them to be on the top i bring them below then i have my grid on top i, I don't want it to be on top as well i don't put it in between here so <clears throat> if i click two times on that grid i can change the symbology to pseudo color let me use that color then i can i've looked at this data a little bit i've looked at this data a little bit so we will try to apply some colors if i say apply I see something something is happening but I don't see anomalies yet so I can play with uh, my ranges here to get the nice thing um, before this video I have I know this data so I know that if I put for uh, no let's say 43,000 nano Teslas to uh, 45,000 nano Teslas and I validate it's possible that I will see something okay now I see that in this area there's a pipeline going right over there there are some dotted anomalies here and there so i have already an idea of where i i will I'll be looking at anomaly anomalies so i see something around here i see something around here so as i told you there's a pipeline here i can see that very well there are some anomalies here there are some anomalies here you can do your own thing everyone uh, qgs uh, qgs does not belong to anybody you can do whatever you want in the qgs there are other algorithms right in here i can come here and say i want to look at the stand I want to look at this methodology i click there it gives me more sense out of my data so it all depends on the level of uh, uh, details you are looking for but i'm showing you just preliminary observation of a magnetic data before i even start processing it in a geophysical sense so i can come over here <coughs> i have something called profile tool right here profile tool but uh, if you come to plugins plugin management you can open plugin management if you right here profile you will see a lot of them but these are the ones i'm using see this profile tool over here the one that's the ones that are thick are the ones that i'm using so i close this if i come to profile tool that's a profile tool over there and the profile tool as will ask me to add a layer that i want to observe that is this interpolated layer i want to look at i can put it the color that i want to see the interpolation is black for example then um, how do i want to see it i can cut a profile manually but since i have lines here that's the reason why we created lines i can say the active line selected selected layer bingo so actually i am now looking at that line here this is the selected line here now i'm looking at that line so if i come to this anomaly i can zoom see the mouse is connected if you look over here you see that red dot moving over there so i can look at this anomaly bingo is on the pipeline i come right over here uh, i see an, an another uh, something like an anomaly right here but i don't really trust that because the line is bending there so you can you can do something like you click on each line let me just put this like this you can click you can start going down on the lines you see that you see those are your magnetic anomalies I think this is very easy to look at so you can look at all the lines in that fashion so yeah now uh, that's a quite that's a long line and with lots of things so you remember this line can may still have noise inside i've not done any filtering on this uh, on this line that will be real uh, the moment when i'm doing like you know geophysical uh, interpretation of the anomalies that i can go smoothen out stuffs right over here but for the moment that's what the line is saying so uh i'll click there that's what we have so now that i have 
find a way to observe an anomaly i can if i really want to map this i can click on each of these points right over here and i can create a list of anomalies so the last thing i will do i will pause the video again one more time and arrange things on my side so if you look at the surface this surface is not free from um, noises like uh, regional anomaly or uh, local geology like you see all of this section is like blue all of this section is a little bit like uh, light colored so this is generally the geology of this area that is bringing this uh, general anomalies look at this profile here you see that it goes up a little bit all of these kind of things are the effects of the <coughs> the, the the geology of the area so these are the things that in further processing they have to be removed so you can go ahead and create a general um uh, sorry there's a background noise but that's fine you can go ahead and create a general um, uh, raster or geotiff, whatever you can call it. You can create a, a, a general map of this. And for me to do that, I can go back to um, raster analysis, um, nearest distance. Then I will say um, the first radius. Let me just leave it at five. Let me go to second radius and let me leave it there at ten, for example. And I will say the Z value. No, we don't have not choose, chosen anything yet. So um, this is our point file. The Z value is uh, F. And we put some smoothing. Let's say we put smoothing up for about five. Then we come down and I will do a test first. He, uh, we created a surface, but the surface still has holes. So we need to increase that. I will just go back and surface raster. Uh, analysis inverse to power um smoothing five and as it as it there first reduce i go to 10 second reduce i go to 15 this that should be the f and i come down and I run it again okay this is a little bit better do you have a hole there we have a hole there but that's not a big deal so let's give this um <coughs> some colors we go to pseudo color and remember, I said from 43,000 to 45,000, I will apply that. So, beam, that's what we have as a general motif of the area or a general look of the magnetic anomalies. I have a favorite color that I use for my anomalies. And uh, that color should be, it's not here. Okay, I'll use that so you know um, there are other algorithms you can use like this one it usually produces a stronger result so you can see anomalies there but it highlights also other things that are not anomalies so for me to keep that down i can go back here i can go to user define go to forty three thousand. go back to forty five thousand. i validate so if I was actually looking just for this pipeline, then I don't think that I need any further processing. So I can just trace the pipeline right over here. And a few noises, a few uh, anomalies that we can see here. So, um, but if I needed more an uh, analysis to analyze, um, maybe to give an idea of the size or the, uh, the, the, the aerial extent of the anomalies, then I would do further processing. So, um this is uh, just a first video to if some of you that uh, want to do this by yourselves how you can get about this so i can get about i can go ahead and i digitize all of this like a pipeline or I digitize points and classify them so yeah see you in another video thank you very much